Okay, I wanted to make this video to talk about police violence versus community violence. And they are two different things. What happened uh, was there was a shoot, uh, a mass shooting here in the Twin Cities recently. And the reaction to it was as if police violence is the same as community violence. Now, if you know anything about Minneapolis, this was where George Floyd was murdered by Derek Chauvin uh, and other police officers standing by who were complicit in that action of violence on May 25th, 2020. Uh, there have been a litany of other people before that. George Floyd is not the first uh, person or black person to be murdered by the police department here in Minneapolis or St. Paul uh, Police Department. Uh, that sparked an international, uh, an international uprising, and here we are today, December 1st, 2021. So what happened recently, and so, so the, the culture of the Twin Cities, what you should know is that there, there is a, there's a culture of protest, there's a culture of rally, there's a culture of solidarity, there's a culture of uh, action, community action, when an injustice occurs, um, when somebody is brutalized by police. Um, you know, look no further than Dalal Eid or Dante Wright, but there is a culture here that will show up when things happen, when, 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 when the city does something, when state sanctioned violence occurs, this community shows up. And so some of the reporters here seem to be confused and, and think that when any violence happens, everybody should show up and it's, it's different. And I'm going to explain to you why. So there was a mass shooting, uh, over a month ago, it was in St. Paul outside of a bar. It was horrible. It was awful. It, it, it was disturbing and disgusting and awful. It was an awful thing. And a woman ended up dying as a result of it. Um, and this reporter um, decided to say, who is a white woman, this is good for context. Um, uh, she says, I have to say for a mass shooting with 15 shot, one dead, there doesn't seem to be any big outrage. No peace rally, no vigil, no balloons or flowers. 15 people were shot. Is everyone just used to this? Where is the community? I've never seen anything quite like this. Now, I wanna break this tweet down a little bit. So the, the general feeling I get from it is that, hey, where's everybody at? Is not anybody outraged by this? There was a shootout, there was a mass shooting outside of a bar. Why aren't people showing up to, to demand justice? Well, here's the, the first quick, an quick answer. The people were arrested within 24 hours. Justice is there. The people that killed Jamar Clark, black man who was killed by the Minneapolis Police Department, are still working. Do you see the difference? So those men were arrested. However, when police do it, they're held to a different standard. We can talk about qualified immunity. We, we can get to a lot of different things. Uh, but the idea is that police are held to a different standard than you and I. So therefore, these people are going to get arrested right away. It's not, it's not going to be ruled as you know, feared, feared for their life or give them the benefit of the doubt or um, you know, they were justified in this. They're, they're held to a different standard. So this reporter is already dismissing the fact that police are held to in, in intensely, like a whole different standard than people that aren't cops. So that's the first thing. Uh, secondly, why aren't people showing up? People actually did show up. They had a vigil. Um, this was, you know, this was definitely well, presumptuous that people wouldn't. There was a vigil held for the person that was killed. Um, people did gather there. So there it was. Uh, to break this tweet down a little bit and then to wrap this up and conclude it, uh, no peace rally, no vigil, no balloons or flowers. Now what she's referring to is actually the pageantry and whatnot that people bring to other rallies when somebody's killed. and. Uh, there was a kind of a term that's been developed here. I believe it started with Monique Colors Doty, the aunt of Marcus Golden, who was shot and killed by the St. Paul Police Department. Uh, it's called an angelversary. So every, uh, every, uh, the, the day of every year after that person was killed is called an angelversary. So May 25th, 2021 would be George Floyd's angelversary. And so there's balloons, there's uh, there's kind of a cookout sometimes and there's people just reminiscing and celebrating the life of that person um, exiting you know this life and so that could be what she's referencing because here in the Twin Cities there's been a lot of that then uh, 15 in all caps people were shot is everyone just used to this um, this is presumptuous uh, and it sounds tongue-in-cheek on her end which is a little bit um, marginalizing of the situation um, I don't believe a lot of people are used to it, but there are some people that are used to it. And there are some people that are very traumatized by it. 
and they don't return to the scene of any kind of murder. They don't go back to it. Uh, for a lot of people where violence has occurred, they stay away. They don't go back. For a lot of people that are, have been traumatized by gun violence, um, they stay inside. They don't go out. So this is presumptuous to think that people would just return to a scene where uh, a heinous act of violence was committed uh, by community members. Um, the next thing she says is, where's the community? I've never seen anything quite like this. Now she's speaking to her experience. I've never seen anything quite like this. My father's from Detroit. Uh, and I can, I can say he's seen many things like this. Uh, and uh, being with my family out there, they've seen many things like this. And from that experience and understanding that, there's not a whole lot of it, there's not a whole lot of the same the same show up as there is for police brutality and even in, in some neighborhoods folks don't show up uh, to protest police brutality for fear that the police will then cause more brutality to them so everybody copes with trauma differently how this city has coped with police brutality is 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 done it's it's no we're going to show up there's enough of this. There's Terrence Franklin, there's Jamar Clark, there's Marcus Golden, there's Philando Castile, there's, uh, there's Dalal Eid, there's, there's Dante Wright, there's George Floyd. I mean, there's so many, the list goes on, that it's like, no, enough is enough. Community violence stirs from a litany of different things. We could talk about mental health, we could talk about gun violence, we could talk about stratification, economic uh, hardships, uh, lack of resources. There, there, there's survivalism. Gun violence and violence in communities occurs for so many reasons. The issue with police violence is these people are hired to protect and serve the community and end up not only not doing that, but doing the opposite of that. And not only not doing the opposite of that, they end up doing it to a particular group of people, which in Minneapolis happens to be black people. That, that is the group that is targeted, black and indigenous people. And when the city is paying those officers of law enforcement, to come out and serve the people and they don't and they kill the people, then the reaction is going to be different than gun violence occurring by community members in the city. So can you see the difference there? Can you see the difference? Can you understand it? Police are expected to protect and serve and they're held to a standard that if they kill somebody, they then walk. Uh, the Office of Police, uh, the Police Citizen Re Review, um, the, the rate of discipline here in Minneapolis is 0.42%. The national average, I believe, is six to seven percent. So, if a cop, if if a hundred, if, if if a cop does a hundred things uh, wrong that result in a hundred complaints, they'll be disciplined half a time. Whereas in the rest of the country, they'll be disciplined six to seven times. So again, the standard is is diabolically low to the point that psychologically, if you steal something, you're going to do it again. And so, what do you think are happening with police around here? They're doing it again and again and again because they know they can get away with it. These people have been caught. So it, there's not, there's, there's, a, there's a point to grieve and be sad and be disturbed and be disrupted and be, you know, angry and, and whatnot and, and to be depressed about it. And they've been caught. There's a reaction that comes to someone being stolen, somebody being killed, and then that person getting off. You know what I'm saying? So when somebody is killed by state sanctioned violence and then the state exonerates said officer that killed that person, there, there's, a, there's another, there's another uh, impact of grief there that says, well, now I got to show up and tell you that this isn't right. So for this reporter, I, I found this very uh, short-sighted. Um, for them, it, it really it, it spoke to their ignorance, ignorance as well. Uh, I've never seen anything quite like this, um, and many people had, and it would probably behoove this, support, uh, this reporter to speak to people that have seen things like this, um, so they're not tweeting out um, ignorant things anymore. But uh, that is a, that is a vlog for another time. But I just wanted to give you my my experience on reading this this tweet revolving around community violence versus police violence, and and I want to know your thoughts as well. What do you believe the differences are between community violence and police violence? And what have your experiences been? Um, you can put those in the comments below, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.